Hey guys, today I'm going to be giving um, just some tips and tricks for the arena. Uh, we got news that with the big patch coming this Thursday, they're, among other things, they're updating the arena rewards. Uh, I'm assuming they're doing the same thing the Japanese server did on this big patch, is they're adding vision cards to the arena and Cactuar cards. So, for those of you that usually just ignore the arena, or maybe you go in with like a suicide team and you just lose 10, 10 battles a day and that's it, um, assuming we get the same update as the Japanese server, which seems likely, um, it's really going to be beneficial to do the arena and get um, some of those ranking rewards, so you can get that Cactuar card every week. So I'll just be showing you know some some of the tricks that I use to make arena a little bit easier to deal with. So the first thing we're going to do is with the arena team. Um, this is my arena team. We're going to ignore Zidane because he's the bonus unit. You want basically a core team of four, four units and then one slot open for the weekly bonus unit, whatever it is, that gives the highest bonus. It'll usually be like the free MOG event or a banner unit from the last two weeks of banners, etc. But you always want a bonus on the team. But we're, we're not going to talk too much about him because we're going to assume that's kind of like a dead slot. Maybe you're bringing like a four-star unit or something. Uh, so we're not going to worry about that. But for the rest of the team... Uh, the one thing you want on everyone is status immunity. That's just like a given. And also you want really high hit points. So we're going to start with Dr. Aiden. For me, he's going to be the most important unit on the team. You want someone that can deal with things like when the enemy goes first, things like AoE charm, AoE stop, or AoE chaining limit burst. That's going to be the big problem is AoE chaining limit burst. And I'll show some examples about how to deal with that. But the best way is some kind of unit that can recover your team and survive those ambushes. So you'll see Dr. Aiden has 28,000 hit points. Defense and spirit doesn't matter in the arena. You're always going to take cap damage no matter what. Like a unit with like 300 magic or something will deal cap damage. So don't worry about defensive stats. Just worry about pure hit points. You want to get as high as you possibly can. So you'll see my Aiden is um, dual wielding his own staff, uh, and this is this is not for the evasion. This is only because this gives a 30 32 percent hit points because of my item world. Uh, we've got like those sweet earrings, the dress, the crown, and then a bunch of hit point materials. Uh, these are some STMRs. You might not have these, but just do the best hit point materials you have. Uh, Shock absorber was free. Everyone has adamantine. Uh, Barrels TMR is 40 percent HP. And if you don't have another STMR, just put like a 30% HP hit points, and you'll be okay. And you kind of want to door pot your, your like survival unit to hit points to make them survive even better. Uh, you don't have to, it's optional, but if, if you're, if you're going to be serious about the arena, it's worth the investments to door pot your survival unit. The last thing you're going to want is Super Ribbon. If the unit is not immune to stop and charm naturally... Super Ribbon gives them stop and charm immunity. So, for example, if the enemy team goes first and someone's got, like, Frozen Hurricane and they AoE stop your team on turn one, this makes him immune, and Dr. Aiden can cure that on the entire team. So, for example, if we get stopped, Aiden will resist it, and he can cure the entire team with Potent Disinfectant. Same thing for Charm. He can, um... This does do charm. Oh yeah, here it is down at the bottom. This just cures charm as well. Charm is not as big a deal in the arena as stop is. Stop is way more common, but having both is important. Uh, things like evasion or elemental resist, those technically work, but they're they're really easy to get around. So a lot of teams will be ignoring your evasion with like double hand or mages, and mostly they'll be doing non-element elemental damage if they're built you know properly. So elemental resist is usually irrelevant. Just go for max possible hit points. So he's going to be our like survival unit. No matter what happens, he should always survive. Now the rest of the team, you want some just chainers that can deal non-elemental damage. We're going to start with the, the two on the right. So Terra is chosen because she has a skill that she can quad cast on turn one, which is Chaos Wave 2. Now the reason this skill is special is for one thing, it's AoE. It's non-elemental, so it'll never get resisted. And it's a dual part skill. If you see here, it does power 100% 7 hits and then power 500% 1 hit. That means every single cast of this will hit twice and bypass that, that 999 damage cap. So every cast of Chaos Wave 2 will deal, before chaining modifiers, 2000 damage. Now when she quad casts this, Terra by herself is dealing 8000 elemental 
non I'm sorry, 8,000 non-elemental AoE damage on turn one. And because it's magic, it can't be evaded either. It can be covered passively. We'll go over that in a little bit, but for now, we're gonna not worry about passive cover tanks. We're gonna we're gonna cover them soon. But Terra's a good choice here. Um, units like Riku, for example, uh, Riku X2. Her skill, um, Varja, is the same thing as a double hit skill. Uh, you don't want to really use true dual wield units in the arena, and if you do use them, you want to make them double hand with accuracy. That way, it bypasses evasion because some teams will build their team evade. Those are not as common these days because at this point everyone really knows evasion just doesn't really work because mages or double hand bypasses it and all evasion does is lower your hit points which makes you actually weaker. But some some people are still still you know living in the past 2019 teams and they still use evasion. So you kind of want to still stay away from true double hand just in case you do run into an evasion team. So other than that, Terra is status immune. Again, status immune is not technically required. You could cure it with Aiden if you got statused. But I like status immunity just for one less thing to worry about. So the whole team is status immune. And then again, max hit points. Now Terra's only got 20,000 hit points. She will die in the ambush to something like a four Kuja team. And I'm going to try to fight some of those teams to show you how to deal with it. But 20,000 hit points will not survive a four Kuja ambush. Just FYI, she's going to die. Aiden will survive and bring her back. But 20,000 hit points will survive about 95% of teams. Even like the double Kuja teams, she'll still easily survive that. It's only like the Super Whale, four Kuja teams, four Bayman Dark Fina teams like that, that will kill Terror. And then Morgana. Morgana is chosen because, again, she has quad cast on turn one, and she's using um, evocation skills. Now, evocation skills are kind of neat because they ignore everything. Uh, even if you're fighting teams with like Awakened Rain that has auto cover, they cannot auto cover evocation skills. This will completely bypass that and still hit the entire team and nothing whatsoever can ever prevent that. Another nice thing about evocation skills, you see how it costs zero mana. If, for example, this is really rare and not very common any anymore, but sometimes you'll run into a rem that has AoE Siphon Sphere or Delta Sphere, some Delta Siphon, which AoE mana drains your entire team to zero on the first turn, and your team has literally no mana. Something like Morgana can still quad cast her AoE evocation skill on turn one with zero mana, which will get you a bunch of Esper orbs, and then you can do something like summon um, Odin to finish off the team. Or she might even finish the team by herself. Probably not, because that's not that much damage. But she'll fill the Esper gauge for you, and you can summon Odin, which will take out the majority of the team, and you'll easily, easily come back from a mana drain. So other than that, she's just an AoE non-elemental chainer, and she's got um, 22,000 hit points to survive those ambushes. Again, just hit points, hit points, hit points, and status immunity. Uh, she's not immune to blind, but you know that doesn't matter for her. And uh, her enhancements fill the Esper Gauge passively on the first turn. So even though her skills cost um, Esper Gauge, it, it fills automatically for you, which is real nice. Uh, the, the bonus unit, gear is mostly irrelevant. I just gave him hit points. His, his, he's not potted or anything, so he's going he's gonna to super die on any big ambush. He's not going to deal any damage. He's mostly irrelevant, so he's just here to be there. And then the other unit is Selfie. Now, Selfie is a little bit of a, a special unit. She does not have non-elemental chaining. She is forced to use elemental chains, which is um, the best ones are Extreme Wardaga, or Extreme Quaker, whichever one is not banned that week. These are nice because they imperil by 110% before dealing damage. You're almost never going to run into a team that is running 210% elemental resistances. So even though she's using elemental damage, it's almost always going to work. But the reason I chose Selfie is for one, the main thing is her LB. Her LB when maxed out is a 90% chance. Where is it? Here it is. 90% chance to AoE instantly KO the entire enemy team. So sometimes you'll face like a really wailed out team that has like 30,000 hit points, multiple passive covers, and double healer, and it's just really hard to kill them. You can use something like Selfie's uh, The End to AoE death them. Odin also works, but I think Odin's death chance is only like 50% chance, so it's going to fail pretty often. Selfie's death will almost always work. Now, those teams I mentioned, they are going to usually have, like, Genji Shield and Safety Bit on at least two units. And some of them may even have uh, Sayaka's STMR from the Limited, Limited Valentine unit, which gives more sources of death immunity. But most of the time, death will take out 
most of the team, even all the team maybe, if they're really tanky, and sometimes maybe one of them survives, which you can then pick off solo, not a problem. So that's going to be our team. We're going to be having three chainers, one survival unit, and a bonus unit. And that's going to be our core setup. So let me go ahead and get into the arena, and I'll try to find some of these really hard, these hard teams to, to deal with, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. So we'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so now we're going to look for a team. Now, you pretty much always want to, if you're going for higher rank, you want to always challenge whatever player is in slot one. You see this ratio here? The ratio, the higher that number, the more points you're going to get per win. So if I challenge, like, Rainier, um, I'd get more points. But I'm going to challenge someone that's a little bit more, more challenging to kill, which is going to be this uh, rank 237 player. Even though it's less points and I shouldn't challenge them because I want, I want more points, we're going to go, just for an example, this uh, rank 237 player with a Lilith lead. So we're going to go ahead and challenge them and see how we do. So this team, this is one of those troll teams that I mentioned. It's got like a Kuja, it's got Lilith, Lilith does AoE chaining, it's got Siaka. I'm assuming the Siaka's probably got 30,000 hit points, it's going to be hard to kill. But let's go ahead and face them and just, you know, deal with it. So this team will not be dangerous on the ambush. If they go first, it's not going to matter because Lilith does not do anything pretty much at all except for counterattacks. Uh, he's only got one Kuja, so the Kuja is not going to chain with anyone. So if they go first, it'll be a super easy survival. If we go first, it's a little bit more dangerous because you've got the Liliths over there. But we've got some AoE chainers, and like I said, they're probably not rocking 220% water or earth resist. So um, we're going to go ahead and just chain Water with Selfie. And then we'll chain, uh, well, like I said, Terra's got Quadcast on turn one. So we're going to Quadcast Chaos Wave 2. And then we're going to Quadcast the um, the Arcane Chaos with Morgana. Now so, I, this team, I don't usually fight. I, I usually only fight the number one ranked team. which uh, So I don't know what this team has. They might have passive cover. We'll see what happens. Uh, so no passive cover. Okay, so we're going we're going dealing our damage. Now because we're chaining Chaos Wave Awaken and regular Chaos Wave, it's not gonna quite uh, perfect chain, but you know, whatever. Okay, so we actually killed the Lilith, so they're not gonna be dangerous. Assuming we didn't kill the Lilith, we'd go ahead and drop Aiden's LB here for the AoE re-raise. You're always gonna fill his LB when you're AoE chaining. That also gives a four thousand point barrier, and the bonus unit is whatever is gonna guard. Uh, so, so this this team was a pretty a pretty safe clear. Uh, so Kuja Kuja chained his LB, but there's no actually chainer, so it does no damage. But there we go. And then we're just gonna go ahead and finish him off with our with our DPS. Oh, he's going again. He's he's gonna chain his LB again. It's gonna deal it's gonna deal basically hardly any damage because it's only one guy. So I, I guess this team was overall not too hard to clear. I'll try to find I'll try to find a more challenging team in a second. And Dr. Aiden also counterattacks with AoE mana regen and AoE barrier. So even if your team does get AoE mana drain, you know how I mentioned that uh, Morgana can even chain with no mana. If we had got AoE uh, mana drained, then Aiden would counter with um, mana regen. Oh, actually, it turns out the Kuja was was immune to non-elemental damage or water damage, which is why we dealt less damage. Uh, that's fine. So we'll just use Terra. Uh, Terra can only quadcast on turn one, so we'll just triple Chaos Wave and finish him off. No big deal. Now you see here how it does that, and then it caps at 999 at the end. Yeah, that, that dealt 6,000 damage by triple casting that. It would have dealt 8,000 if we had um, dual cast, or quadcasted it on turn one. Alright, let's see if I can find another challenging team. Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I want to find one that has the, the four Kuja set up. There's one guy. It's like a Korean guy. I don't know the name. I don't see him offered currently. I've been fighting him and killing him every every, every orb. But, he's of course, he's not being offered right now. Uh, th here's a guy with a Kuja lead. Let, 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 let's see if he has a multiple Kuja team so we can hopefully get some examples. Oh, here we go. Triple Kuja and double Squall. Okay, perfect, perfect. This team is going to be um, very, very painful on turn one. So let let's let's, uh, let's 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 see if they go first. So they're probably going to wipe out all our units. Doctor Aiden should survive this. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> let's see. Oh, we went first. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and just punch and pretend like the team went first. We're not going to actually. We're going to we're going to we're going to give this team a chance to go. 
So assuming they win first, they're going to always chain their LB. This is going to deal really high damage. It'll probably wipe out everyone except Dr. Aiden. Yeah, this is the most dangerous, um, the most dangerous kind of team. It's coming. Okay, well, it didn't quite kill our high hit point units. Um, so apparently about 20, 22,000 uh, is enough to survive. Uh, Terra died. Now, you see how we went, we, uh, the, the spinner, because we passed our turn one, the enemy did have a chance to go two turns in a row because he went second, then he could have gone first again. And if that happened, we would have actually lost because I passed my turn one. Normally, you're not going to ever pass your turn one. If you go first, this team is a free auto win, you know, whatever. But because we went, um, we went, we went first and then passed. We we gave the enemy a chance to get two turns in a row. That'll never happen in a real fight. Uh, on turn one, we would have just chained and wiped them out immediately. Uh, but assuming that everyone had died, we'll just go ahead and guard, pretend like, pretend like they had died. We would have used Dr. Aiden to AoE raise everyone, and then we would use Apple a Day. That's going to give us, that's going to full heal everyone, and it's also going to give us a 4,000 point barrier. So now everyone has, like, effectively uh, even more hit points. So here we go again. They're, they're chaining again, but now we've got Dr. Aiden's barrier. So, for example, Magitek Warrior Terra has effectively 24,000 hit points. So she's going to even survive here as well. Eventually. It's a lot of chaining. Yeah, so see, Terra survived because of the, um, the barrier. And because, again, we passed our first turn, we're kind of, we're kind of out of sync here. Uh, let's go ahead and now let's go ahead and wipe out this team. Now, the cool thing about these kind of teams is they have like no healer or anything, no re-raise, so they're super easy to take out. So we'll just go ahead and triple all this. We'll just triple. And now just in case we don't one-shot this team, maybe they're really bulky or something, you would use Aiden's LB here to uh, AoE re-raise your team. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and chain them. They're probably going to die instantly. If they don't, uh, then we'll just We'll, we'll um, kill them the turn after because they, they have no healer. There you go. Yeah, so so as long as you survive that initial ambush, um, which we did, I'm, I'm actually going to challenge that team again so we, so we can tr we can try to get ambushed and show you show you how, show you how you deal with it. All right, let, let, let's, let's see if we can fight them a second time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and refresh orbs for the sake of making a video. Uh, we actually don't have arena pots on global. We don't. So we have to use Lapis. Oh, well. It's 100 Lapis for the video. We'll do it. All right. Let's go ahead and try. I think that guy's name was Fritters. Let's try to find Fritters again. Yeah. Let's go ahead and fight him again. And we're, we're going to hope he goes first. And we're going we're gonna to show you how to, how to deal with it when he, go, when he actually goes first. Because when the enemy goes first, your turns won't be out, out, won't be out of sync like it was when I, when I passed my first turn. Or if we go first, I'll just one-shot him on turn one and then challenge him again. I'm on. You can connect. All right. Please go first. Here we go. Okay, so they're, they're going to ambush us. Dr. Aiden has his barrier. He's got effectively 30,000 hit points. He's not going to die here. The rest of the team may die. But it doesn't matter if they do. It's really laggy because it's so many so many AoE chainers. Alright, well, our Morgana and Selfie survived. Uh, which is fine. So we'll go ahead and just raise and do the same thing. We're going to AoE raise everyone and then we're going to Apple a day. That'll give us a full heal and it'll put a barrier up. Uh, Morgana can quad cast on turn one, so we'll swap her to quadding. Now we could also chip in some chaining with Zidane, but like I said, sometimes that unit you just won't have a, a good bonus unit, and it'll be something like I don't know, Crow, the four star unit, and it'll be effectively pointless. So we're just gonna guard Zidane every turn. We're not gonna actually do anything with him. So we didn't we didn't kill him off. We killed a Squall. The rest of them are still there, and and they go again. But they're never gonna get two turns in a row. 
Because we went first, now we're, now we're alternating. And the, the only way for them to ever get two turns in a row is if we get two turns in a row first. And and that'll never happen. Because if we ever get two turns in a row, we're gonna win. We're gonna win on the spot. So at this point, no one's gonna die. For one thing, one of the squalls, one of the squalls is dead, so they lost the chainer. Also, we have we have Aiden's barrier here. So yeah, at this point, we're fine. So here I want to show you Selfie's The End. We're going to go ahead and use Selfie's LB. This is an AoE Death LB. Now, assuming that we were they were using like a bunch of Awakened Reigns with a, with a ton of bulk, maybe they're using like a double healer, we would use The End, which is a little bit of a slow a slow skill. There we go. So one Kuja died. They all died. This one apparently resisted. What a jerk. Uh, it's only a 10% chance to fail. It fails on him. But a single Kuja can't, um, can't kill us. So let's go ahead and use Odin. Maybe we can finish him off with the other death. There we go. So the, that Odin death worked. So you can use death as well to kill these teams if need be. But usually usually I don't bother with death because for one thing, I just chain them down. It's, and chaining is more easy with repeat. And actually, most of the time, I, I don't even quad cast on turn one. Just because it's easier to repeat. I'm going I'm to show you how I normally farm. Let's go ahead and farm the number one guy because he's the most points. All right. So this this is Rainier. Rain, Rainier's a cool dude. He's not not, not some kind of like try hard dork that puts up four kujas. He's just a plain old generic team like mine. He's just in here for the for the, for the good for the good um, arena rewards. He's not trying to troll anyone. So he's going to be a super easy fight. Of course, my team is also a super easy clear. Like if you fight my team in the arena, it's got high health, but it has no like troll tactics. Like my team is very very low risk to be on the offensive or the. I guess it'd be on the defensive if you're challenging them. Yeah, if you ever fight my team in the arena or something like Rainier's team, or honestly most teams, most players in the arena are pretty cool. The high rank players, there's very few of them that are like this, you know, real try-hard troll status. Some people are just dumb. But anyway, for the most part, this is how I normally do my arena. I just put it on repeat and I, I'm just I just lazy mode it. Normally I triple cast uh, triple white and I triple cast Banishka to toss in some extra damage with Aiden. This week, Holy Damage is banned, so Aiden is, Aiden literally can't even do anything. So I just put him on repeat with Curagia. I just guard him, and then I just repeat triple cast. The reason I do, the reason I skip quad cast on turn one is because on turn two, repeat will not work, but we can always repeat triple cast because those are permanently active. So this is how I usually do it. Um, we, we might kill them, some might survive. If they survive, we'll just finish them off on turn two with just pushing repeat. It's no big deal. So apparently, yes, so we went, and, we, went, we went ahead and killed them all. No big deal. Easy, easy. All right, let me go ahead and try to fight some other players, and we'll, we'll, see, we'll see if we can get some variety. I, I kind of want to fight one of those, like, double rain, double Lilith teams that are just really try-hard trolling, and they're still really easy to kill if you, if you have a team like this. So let's see, let's see if we can find one. Um. Okay, we're gonna fight Rain. I, I I actually don't recognize this player. We're gonna fight him. Maybe his team is try hard. Maybe it's just a generic team. Nope, it's a generic team. It'll be very easy to kill. Which is cool. Uh, players that put up teams like this that don't that don't try to troll you, like you know, they're definitely cool dudes. So even though I'm saying it's an easy clear, you know that that is that is not not an insult. That's actually a compliment by making it easier for everyone else. But yeah, we'll just go in here and push repeat. Super easy. They go first. Uh, they've got two healers and they don't have any uh, AoE chainers. It'll be it'll be fine. They can't do anything. Uh, apparently Zahn is using whatever that was. Whatever, we'll just repeat and we'll just chain again. You know, whatever. We kill him on turn one. We'll, we'll, we'll fight somebody else in a second. Try to get a. We're gonna try try to get some of the some of the trollier teams to see how we deal with them. But arena really is super easy as long as you just build a really bulky team. And also, if, if if you do the arena at the high ranks, you're gonna most of the time see the same like five or ten players offered every single orb, and you'll pretty much get into a groove of who's an easy challenge and who isn't. Like, we know this Rain guy is an easy kill. Maybe, for example, my Kokoroko, maybe we know him as, like, a troll player. We would just avoid him if you really want to. They're both worth 1.12, or, yeah, 1.12 ratio. So they give the same points. 
We're gonna we're gonna challenge this guy. I'm not sure if he's a troll team or not, Mr. Kokoroka or whatever. Nope, it's a pretty easy team. It'll be very easy to clear. Yeah. But yeah, uh, if you do the arena orbs at the high ranks, you, you you'll definitely you you'll, you'll recognize you know these teams. Oh, they're troll. Maybe they take two or three turns to clear. You're still gonna win. It's just gonna take longer, and I'll just avoid them just for the just for the convenience. But every now and then. Every now and then, like, for example, one of those troll teams will be the most ratio, and all the other options will be low ratio, and I'll fight them and clear them anyway, because it's more points. Alright. I'm running out of orbs. I'm not going to refresh again. I, I, I was, I was kind of hoping to find more of those troll teams, but I'm not. I'm just not finding them. How many orbs do I have left? Two orbs? One orb. Oh, let's try to, let's try to, let's try to find one. Uh, did the list update? The list did not update. Uh, I don't recognize any of these names as trollish teams. Like these, these, these teams at 0 0.5 ratio, you don't want to ever challenge them because they're really bad points. You want to always challenge someone at 0.1 or at 1.0 or higher. So like Tafu, Dafro, My Kokoroko, uh, Rain. These are the ones you want to fight. If we fought this guy down here, like at the very bottom of the list, um, the, the Kefka guy, I'm not, I'm not sure what his name is, we would get a lot less points because of that 0.5 ratio. So you don't want to challenge them. You want to always challenge top of the list. Uh, we're going to challenge this rank 89 guy at point at 1.05. Hopefully it's a troll team, just for the... Okay, so here's uh, here, here's a guy with a tank. Tanks are usually built to be trollish, so we'll, we'll see what happens. He's got a Lucas on the team, but it seemed like, it seemed like only one, one tank. So maybe he's not really a troll team. Maybe he's just trying to survive, and Lucas is his best survival unit, which is possible. Let's go ahead and fight him and see what happens. So Baymet Dark Fiena is another unit that has an AOE chaining LB, and if you fight them, they're going to be really dangerous. Uh, there was a team a few weeks ago that had like five Baymet Dark Fienas. Same thing. Um, I had the same kind of team. I had my Dr. Aiden. He survived. He raised on turn one, and then on turn two, I killed all the Fienas. You know, generic. Uh, but yeah, so if they don't have they don't have any L L AOE LB chainers, it'll be it'll be very very safe. So we're gonna go ahead and chain here, see what happens. I'm actually not chaining my Aiden because I might want to use Odin depending on what they do if they survive. If they didn't survive. This team's not really built for troll. They're just you know whatever. Okay, so our our, our three chainers our three chainers won. So I guess that'll be it. I was kind of hoping to find some more of those multiple LB teams. We only found one. We didn't find any Awakened Rain teams. Uh, Awakened Rain is not really as popular these days. Lilith is not really as popular these days. In the top ranks, as you see, I'm rank 143. I only really fight players at that kind of rank. So maybe they're more popular in the lower ranks. I honestly don't know. I, you know, you could be watching this video and saying, you're just so out of touch. I'll, all I fight is Lilith teams. You don't in the top ranks. So if you start doing, you know, the arena really often, you stay in those top ranks, you're not going to see very almost any Liliths. You'll see very, very few of them. Uh, the, the most common thing you'll see that's trollish is like five Kujas or five Bayman Dark Venus. And the team I just showed you can easily handle them. So it's a little scary, but Dr. Aiden will always survive, so you're, you're good. Uh, there it is. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, and... Next week, hopefully, we'll start getting the Arena Weekly Rewards, which gives uh, Cactuars. Uh, I think on JP, 30, I think 10,000 and above gives Cactuars. Maybe it'll be 30,000 and above on Global, which will actually be really easy. We don't, know till the, we don't know until the patch comes out on Thursday. We'll see. See you guys then.